Brother Joe Arthur, and welcome to our live service today. I trust the music and the message will be a blessing to you and your family. I trust God will meet a need in your life as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Welcome to our service. It's now in progress. Come on in. We have met to worship. is worthy of our praise, our service, our love. Uh, after the service tonight, we invite you to go over to see the foyer uh, of the gym, the kitchen, the areas, the bathrooms, all of that's been uh, refurbished and remodeled, and we're so thankful that the Lord has provided all of that. I appreciate Miss Arthur helping us with that so very much, and uh, the Lord's been so good to us. Come on, girls. Sing for us. We love them. Thank God for them. And I love to see the Lord work in the lives of young people, don't you? Praise God. Sing it out. Change. 
inch worth of sin too precious, guilty to forgiven, hungry in to satisfy, empty in to full. When all the lives are shattered and we believe we matter, when you change broken into Guilty to forgiven, hungry in to satisfy, empty in to full. You change worthless into precious, guilty to forgiven, hungry in to satisfy, empty in to full. And we believe we matter when you change broken into You say, uh, when did the Lord do that? Well, i tell you what we'll do. Anybody here that was on your way to hell, you called on Jesus Christ. He washed you in his precious blood. Raise your hand real high. That's when God took the broken and made it beautiful. I want you to turn with me tonight to Psalm 100. And 38. Psalm 138. I made this statement this morning in my introduction, and I know most of the time my introductions are better than my sermons, but just thank God I got a sermon to go with my introduction. I got a friend of mine whose introduction and sermons have nothing to do with each other. But in this statement, I love the way the Bible illustrates its commands. In other words, not only God in the Bible tells us what to do, but he illustrates to you and I how to do that. I'm glad tonight the Bible does more than command us to pray. It shows us how to pray. I'm glad the Bible does more than tell you and I to live by faith. It tells us how to live by faith. I'm glad tonight that the Bible does more than tell you and I to live in victory, but it shows you and I, illustrates how we live a victorious Christian life. I'm glad the Bible tells us to be a witness, to be a soul winner, to be a blessing, but it also illustrates and shows us how that can be done in our hearts and in our lives. When you come to the subject that we've been preaching on today, the subject of revival, I believe we all know that we need revival. I believe we all know that God wants his children to be revived, especially in this day of apostasy in which we live. And the Bible has many things to say about revival. The Bible deals with the prayer of revival or the plea of revival of revival. Psalm 85, wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? And I don't believe our heavenly father is offended when his children in one mighty course plea and pray for a great awakening. And brother, I'm glad that God answers our prayer when we pray in faith believing. 
The greatest prayer you'll ever pray in your life is when you pray for God to have mercy on your never dying soul. The second greatest prayer you'll ever pray is to pray for revival. And so the Bible deals with the prayer revival. Then the Bible deals with the plan of revival. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, will what humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. By the way, in God's plan of revival, the if is always before the then. We want God to do the then, but we're not willing to do the if. But I'm glad if we do our part, God will do his part. And he deals with the plan of revival. We preached this morning from the book of Jonah, the life of Jonah, the city of Nineveh, the pattern of revival. The greatest example of revival in all the Bible is that one man got right with God, one man got revived, and 120,000 souls were spared. And man, what an awesome picture of God wanting to flow through you and us as children of God to reach out and bless others. And I was reading the other day about Jacob's prayer as he's crawling on the ground in that wrestling match and by the way, if you get in a wrestling match with the Lord, he's going to win every time. And God was talking to Jacob, and Jacob was talking to God. And God said, not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to make you a blessing. And how God wants to make the church a blessing to the world. And so the Bible deals with the prayer, the plea, the plan, the pattern of revival. But I want us to come tonight to chapter number 38 of the Psalms in verse number 7. And I believe I could be safe to say tonight that this is dealing with the promise of revival. The promise of revival. Wouldn't it be disheartening to pray for something, to go for something, to seek for something that you and I didn't have the promise from God that it could happen? And I'll tell you this tonight, if God tells you and I to pray for it, he is able to deliver it. Psalm 138 are some terrible circumstances in the life of David. David is on the run. David is running from his enemies. He is cursed and despised and rejected on every hand. When you study the life of David, especially as he walks in that valley to fight that giant that will not be the last giant that David is going to have to face, fight nor defeat but notice how he finds hope and help in the Lord and you come to verse number 7 of the 138th Psalm and the first word I love it though though that word though means in spite of. However, on the other hand, no matter how bad it feels and looks and smells and tastes, in spite, though. Notice what he said in verse seven, though I walk in, and notice this word, the midst of what? Trouble. You remember what that little word midst means? It means right smack down in the middle. Trouble in front, trouble behind, trouble on the right, trouble on the left, in the midst, surrounded in every area by trouble. I don't believe it takes a rocket science to figure out that America is in trouble. We're in trouble morally. We're in trouble spiritually. We're in trouble economically. We're in trouble politically. This nation is in a mess tonight. We all know that. And the church is surrounded by trouble. It seems like every day there's another enemy to Christianity. There's another enemy to the church. It's going to dawn on us one day the devil hates what we're trying to do. But if somebody was on your territory, 
stealing your sheep or goats, wouldn't you hate them too? Man, the devil don't like the church to win souls. He don't want to see people saved. He don't want you and I to bring the lambs from the slaughter. By the way, we're not in heaven yet. We're not in the millennial reign yet. The lion is not laying down by the lamb yet. Someone said, well, the devil's already on the chain. Yeah, he's chained around your mother-in-law's neck. Say amen. Brother, we are in the midst of a fight, a battle. Trouble is on every hand. But notice his hope and help in verse seven. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, watch this next word, thou. He is not looking to a friend. He is not looking to a fellow soldier. And he's not looking to the government. He's not looking to himself. He's not looking to his money. His not, now his attention and affection is upon the only one that can help him in the midst of his trouble. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, said with me now, thou, thou, notice the next word, Wilt, will, speak it in faith like it's already been done. Hallelujah. Thou wilt, say it with me, revive me. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. That verse tells me something tonight. Number one, it tells me that God can. Number two, it tells me tonight that God wants to. And it tells me tonight that God will. I mean, wouldn't it be a disheartening thing for me to get up here for an hour this morning, well, 38 minutes exactly this morning, and preach on revival, revival. Let's pray for revival. Let's beg God for revival. And God couldn't do it. I'm glad that's not the case tonight. I'm glad God can. I'm glad God wants to. And I'm glad that God will. I was riding down the road one day listening to this fellow who thinks or thinks he knows something about the Bible. And he was preaching on worship. And he said, I'm going to pray that the Lord will create an atmosphere that we may be able to worship him. And I said to myself, oh boy, if you're waiting for the atmosphere to get conducive to worship, you may never worship the Lord because the atmosphere doesn't produce worship. Worship changes the atmosphere. I promise you tonight in Job 1 and 2 as he's standing there as his children die and his crops burn and his wife tells him to curse God and die and he breaks out from the top of his head to the sole of his feet and some kind of infectious pulsating running sores. It was not a happy atmosphere. It was not a conducive atmosphere to joy but the Bible said that Job arose and rent his mantle and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh blessed be the name of the Lord I want to tell you the atmosphere we need to live in is the atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving and gratitude and being grateful to God well that's the way it is for revival Man, we don't get revival in the good times. We need it in the bad times. We don't need revival in the light. We need it when it's dark. And he said, though I walk, though I live in the midst of trouble, and trouble is before me, and trouble is behind me, and trouble is beside of me. Lord, I know it's there and it's then that you will come and you will revive me in, in spite of the battle, in spite of the pressure, in spite of the trouble, in spite of my enemies, in spite of the storms. God, it's then and there in the midst of my trouble when I feel overwhelmed, when I'm outnumbered and I'm about to be overcome by the obstacles of life. That's when I look up and the Savior looks down and he will revive me. God, you will strengthen me. You will 
stir me. You will move in my life. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. That is a promise. That is a promise that God can and he is able to do something in our lives. I've not done the study that some of my friends have, but what little study I have done on revival the revivals that changed America, the revivals that altered the course of a nation. It was more than a month or six weeks or eight weeks emotional euphoria. It was a deep work that God done in the hearts of people that changed them and changed others around them. And all of those revivals I've read about, it came at a time when God's people felt like they couldn't go on. That sin was too big and the pressure was too hard and the mountains were too high. They had came to the place where they had tried everything and it seemed like the light was growing dim and the hope was going out but it was in the low tide. By the way, you, those of you that know anything about oceanology know that the low tide, the ebb tide, is the very lowest point before it turns and starts coming in in an unstoppable way. And every revival that's changed the course of a nation and made an eternal impact on the lives of people came in what I call an ebb tide. It seemed like everything was at an all-time low and sin was at an all-time high. But do you realize from Genesis Garden to the sweet New Jerusalem city limits, God, when man is at his worst, God has always been at his best. And your extremity and my extremity is nothing more than a sovereign opportunity for God to step out on the stage of time and say you have seen what man can do and you have seen what money can buy. May I show you my glory, my power, my sovereignty, how awesome that I am. So I want to encourage our church tonight. We can have revival. We can can have revival. I don't care who's in the White House. We can have revival. I don't care who's on the Supreme Court. We can have revival. I don't care how much the liberals and the American haters and the God haters run our Congress. You and I can have a revival. My eyes are not on the White House. It's not on the Senate. It's not on the Congress. It ain't on the Capitol, the state of Georgia. But my eyes are upon him tonight. My heart beats toward heaven tonight. My faith is in the word of God tonight. My hope is in the blood of Jesus tonight. We can see God move like never before. Here's a promise for you and your family. And I want you to say it this week over and over and over again. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive in the morning when the devil jumps on you, I want you to start saying, though I walk in the midst of trouble, that will revive me. In fact, I want you to turn to somebody right now and say, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. How do you say that in Spanish? Can you say that in Spanish? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Can anybody in this section speak Spanish? Aren't you glad that we have the promise of revival? In closing tonight, how many believe God keeps his promises? Let's say that again. How many believe God keeps his promises? I'm going to call you on the spot. Shell, Mandy, one of them other people that sing with you, can we get it hooked up real quick? I want you to sing the revival song.
Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. We began our service singing this morning. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he can do for you. I see a lot of young people in this room tonight. I've seen more young people in church this year all over America. Every conference, every camp, every meeting I do, every church I preach at, I've seen more young people and more young preachers in church this year than I have seen in the last 20 years of my ministry. And I am thrilled. But you know, instead of getting up one day reading, you know, I read where Moody had this, and I read where Spurgeon had this, and I read where Soja, wouldn't it be wonderful that if these young people that are here tonight could get up one day and say, you know, we had a pandemic in our country in 2020, shut down every church in the United States of America for weeks and some for months and some never opened up. 2021, we got thirsty. We got hungry for God. We got to looking for him. And he came on the scene. And our city was changed and our state was changed and our families were changed. You say you're dreaming big, buddy, I'm not dreaming. I'm just walking in the promise of the word of God. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. And I want him to sing this song, then we're gonna have prayer, and then we're gonna switch gears. Amen, thank you. against the rules our unborn die and we just call it choice oh what will it take for us to see the next generation down on their knees show mercy Lord and help us seek thy face and will thou not revive us once again show thy mercy on our troubled land Reveal to us the power of your grace. And may our children grow to honor you and believe that you will see them through. Help us once again to truly seek thy favor. When will we realize our true means of survival? Lord, send revival. Oh, hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. once again show 
Show thy mercy all on our troubled land. Reveal to us the power of your grace. And may our children grow to honor you and believe that you will see them through. Help us once again to truly seek thy favor. When will we realize our true means of survival? Oh, Lord, send revival. When will we realize our only means of survival? Lord, send revival. Appreciate the Lord giving man to that song. That's great, honey. May that be our prayer this week. And may we pray in faith, believing. Miss Arthur, will you come and help me? Uh, several years ago, about 12 years ago now, I was in a meeting at Macedonia, uh, World Baptist Missions, and I met, a name, I met a man by the name of Gary Ellison that God was using all over the state of Georgia to start Spanish churches. And sitting there in that meeting, the Lord put that burden on my heart for us to do that here at Harvest. And so after the service, I uh, approached Dr. Gary and I said, I'd like for you to come and visit our church and see our facilities and see if you think we can, you know, work together and just start something. He said, well, do you have anybody coming? I said, no. I said, have you ever started one with nobody? He said, all the time. And he looked at his wife and kids and said, Brother Joe called y'all nobody. I meant outside of them. And uh, so he came that Sunday and fell in love with the facilities that God has so graciously blessed us with. And uh, he said, Brother Joe, I feel like it's the will of God, and I do too. And I won't ever forget that Sunday morning. Uh, he, it was just Brother Gary and his children. Next Sunday there was one. Next Sunday there were eight. Next Sunday there were 20, 30, 40. And finally he said, Brother Joe, I've got to go do this again. We need to pray for God to send us a pastor of this Harvest Baptist Spanish congregation. And I said, well, we're going to have to pray God send somebody because I don't even know English, much less Spanish. I speak Southern. You can't even translate y'all. Now, you might be able to do you guys, but not y'all. And uh, he come to me about six months and said, uh, there's a family from Los Angeles area, California, the Barrioses, and said they're going to come visit. And as soon as they came, our hearts just, knitted together and I, they had never seen pollen <laughs> had never seen pollen Raina said to me one day she said what's this yellow stuff in our yard I said we're being attacked by the Russians if that's what it is <laughs> that was COVID-17 <laughs> but they've just been such a blessing and, of course, a lot of them's gotten married off. I think he's got two more he's trying to pawn off. But we love them so very much. And I want my staff, Joe, Tom, uh, Shane, and even you, Chris, want my staff to join me, Miss Arthur to join me. And, Brother Barrios, I want you and your precious wife and your children that are here tonight, I want you to join us on the platform. And I want you to give a standing ovation. For 10 years, 10 years to the Barrios family. Yeah, you can bring your wife with you, man. We've got additions.
That's the prettiest one in the family right there. But don't you just love them and appreciate them for 10 wonderful, wonderful years. Miss Arthur has something we're going to give you, and I trust you'll like these. And we got all the bugs out of them, the best of our ability. And Raina, we got all the pollen off of them when we brought them in. <laughs> Amen. Brother Tom, why don't you come? And uh, we're going to present this plaque to them. And I'm going to let Brother Tom read it. Then I'm going to let Brother Barrios read it to his church, okay? How do you say come here? Benedict. Yeah, Benedict. Pastor Fernando Barrios and family. This plaque is given in grateful appreciation for your 10 years of faithful service to our Lord and Savior and to the Spanish ministry at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. Thank you for a job well done. Dr. Joe Arthur and the members of Harvest Baptist Tabernacle, July 2021. Es un gran honor recibir este reconocimiento. Uh, thank you so much, Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. Thank you for your testimony. This is a testimony that you love the Lord Jesus. When we see the testimony of the love of, jo of, of Jesus Christ, we can, we can see the results. Podemos ver el resultado del gran amor como un testimonio, el amor a Cristo, a la obra de Dios. Gracias por estos 10 años. Thank you so much for the support. Gracias porque eso nos ayuda, nos anima. This is what we got. This is what the Lord Jesus is doing. Thank you so much for the support. We love you, Harvest Bible. Can you read that with them? Yes, sir. Dice, esta placa se da en agradecimiento por sus 10 años de servicio fiel a nuestro Señor y Salvador y al Ministerio Español aquí en Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. Gracias por un trabajo bien hecho. El doctor Joe Arthur y los miembros de Harvest Baptist Tabernacle, Julio 2021. Muchas Julio, gracias. Like oh, my. All right. All right. And, uh, and we got a check we're going to give you for $1,000, but you got to spend half of it on her. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. Come here, Diaz. You and your sister say a little word. Come on up here. You want me to hold you, honey? Oh. <laughs> wow. Harvest family, thank you so much. Uh, I can't even count how many times... You, our Harvest family, have helped us to reach this point and to see God's glory unfold through the Spanish ministry and to see his mercy and his grace reach out to the Spanish communities around this city. And um, as the pastor's son, I can testify all the times that Pastor Barrios has even had to sometimes put his family aside to obey God. And as a young kid, you know, you don't really understand that. Um, but glory to God, uh, we're able to see the fruit of the hard labor that this faithful man of God was able to do. And by God's grace, here we are serving the Lord. And here's to another 10 years, all to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't have... I don't have a whole lot of words. I'm better at singing. <laughs> but um, thank you so much, Harvest Family. A lot of you have taught me the love of Jesus. And I know that the churches are always a reflection of what the pastor is. And Brother Joe, uh, you and Miss Julie have been so good to us. Thank you for the opportunity to give us to serve the Lord. And my daddy loves us. 
Thank you, everybody, for your support and your opportunity. So many people have come to know Christ because of your love. So thank you so much. Amen. Now, these are the two they're trying to pawn off on somebody. much better serving the Lord with your whole heart. Trust me. I thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. And the pollen's okay? Yes. All I'm right. not allergic. Okay. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all your prayers. Uh, you're, you're like a family to me. I've been here since I was three and now I'm 13. And I want to thank God for all these years that I got to serve God with you guys. And thank you very much. Hey, Amen. That's awesome. You, you may be seated. You may be seated. Raina, since you said you're better at singing than talking. Yeah, why don't we do that? But I don't know how to feel like when a woman tells me she don't know how to talk. How many men here, you wish your wife was a better singer than talker, I see. All right, why don't you sing for us? Y'all just have a seat anywhere up there you want to. Praise the Lord. And this is awesome. And you want to sing? Sing that he looked beyond. You want to do that one? Okay. Oh, it's 
Well, we got, we got one more treat. Uh, Dennis, where are you at? You got some kids going to sing for us? All right, you, you take over here. They're going to sing a song before we go here in a minute. And uh, you want to give instruction? An instruction? Yeah, right. Oh, uh, come on up. <laughs> harvest, I mean, uh, all right, this is our youth choir from our, uh, our Harvest Baptist Church. These are all of the young people. From well, I can say that. This is the youth choir from the Harvest Baptist Church. <laughs> We got a special treat. We'll be singing. Uh... Oh, come stand up here, everybody. Come stand up here, guys. All right. Amen. All right. Ain't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Wasn't that wonderful? I tell you what, 
Let's do that course again. And I'll tell you what, well, you do it in English, and the English will sing it then, and then we're going to be quiet, and we're going to let you sing it in Spanish. And if anybody else has got another language, just pop it off any time. Amen. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls me home. Let's sing together. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls me home. Yeah, man. I feel an album coming on, amen? All right, when are you guys going to youth camp, I guess? Next Sunday. Next Sunday night, that's how much? One, 120 bucks. Couldn't sponsor one of these young people. We got them, we, we need eight more to go. So how many can give me $120 here in just a minute? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Amen. We'll just do that tonight. And we thank the Lord. Brother Brown, are we still live and on the internet? Welcome to our multilingual service tonight. We're honored to have you with us. And this is our Spanish ministry. And we're just thankful for it. God bless you so very much. Well, we're going to be dismissed tonight in word of prayer. I want the Barrios, all of your family, to go out in the foyer and, uh, what? Oh, that's right. That's right. So come on, Brother Barrios, get ready. That's right. We're going. He said, I need to borrow you the papistry. Amen. So y'all want to come down or stay up and turn around and look or whatever, that'd be great. And then as soon as he baptizes these, we will... Uh, Go look at the beautiful uh, new foyer over there at the, uh, and I tell you, if you already got your money, uh, jo Joseph Arthur, there you go, son, go ahead and grab that and make sure you do that or you can give it to us at the end of the service. All right, I'll tell you what let's do. Uh, let's do a little bit of this. Sing with me. Brother and we have met to work. Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor Joe Arthur from right here at the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesburg, Georgia. And I want to personally thank you for joining us today for our online service. I trust the singing, the preaching, the service was a blessing to your life. I trust that it birthed faith and hope and victory in your heart. And if you've tuned in today and you have any questions about your relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to get in touch with us. We would love to help you come to know Christ and grow in the grace of God. If you're ever in the Atlanta area, I want to extend a personal invitation for you to come and join us. We're right off of Interstate 75 south of the city of Atlanta and the beautiful Lake Spivey community. And we would love to have you come and be with us on Sunday and enjoy the service. I would love an opportunity to meet you and your family. I trust you will pray for us here at Harvest. We have a very large mission program. We're involved in a lot of different mission projects. 
the Lord has been so gracious in opening so many doors, and we need your prayers for wisdom that God will help us follow the path that He has laid before us. If I'm ever preaching in your area, I'd love to, for you to come, and I'd love to greet you, and let us know that you're watching our program. Again, thanks for coming by, and join us again for our next scheduled program, and we'll see what God will do in our lives.